Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great, as I always say. And in this video, I have a story from Bali, uh, a haunted gas station, the story of a possible cult in Central Oregon, and just a really creepy story at the end. So, that sounds like something that you like. Definitely, pull up a stump and stay a while. Thank you for watching. I live in Bali, which is also dubbed the Island of the Gods. It's Niepe, once again. Me and a few friends are just having some whiskey and stuff, just chilling out. Because it's Niepe, the lights should be out and there should be no sound at all. We were pretty tucked away from the main streets though, so we left the table lamp on and we were just having a nice quiet conversation. Suddenly. The pump for the pool stops working. You can hear it from the kitchen faintly. And we all think, that's weird. So we all get up to go check it out. The lights in the underground maintenance tunnel thing for the pool are all off. The switch is inside the house, close to where we were seated. I go inside the tunnel with a flashlight because the switch didn't work. I get this really weird feeling inside. It's a very tiny room, but it feels gigantic. It's blacker than midnight. I hear this repeated clicking noise from different parts of the room. The room is empty, not including a few bags of chlorine, a pump, and some mops. I tell myself to just man up and go check the damn pump. So I start fiddling around with some buttons and stuff, and then I suddenly... I hear a whisper. I can't really describe what the voice sounded like. It wasn't a man's voice or a woman's voice. Just a soft, neutral whisper. I start freaking out, and this clicking noise gets louder. The whisper turns into sort of a chant or something. I don't know. I run upstairs and into the TV room where I was before. I tell them all to shut up and go to bed. They're all confused and have no idea what I'm talking about. They were just waiting for me to come back. For the rest of the night, I can't get that voice out of my head. The voice comes back every Nyepe, and only on Nyepe. The gods don't like to be messed with, I can tell you. And if you're wondering what Nyepe is, it's the Balinese Day of Silence. It's commemorated every year. It's kind of like their New Year. But obviously, as it is in the name, everything has to be super quiet. But I believe in the days leading up to it, they have a feast. And then that follows by fasting. If I'm not mistaken, I don't have my notes in front of me. So in 2006, I used to work at a gas station. I had two friends there, Fred and Steve. Anyways, I was working late one night. It was around 11. My shift was just ending, and I can see the other co-worker walk in to take over. He opens the door. The bell rings. I look up from restocking the lotto tickets in the glass case that is embedded in the counter. He walks in, and he stands in front of the door, grabbing his jacket and sighing. He says, I hate night shifts. They're creepy as hell. We make small talk for about a minute. And I say, how about your day, man? Anything new? Etc, etc. I'm taking off my dumb paper hat and apron. I fold it up and store it in a small drawer to the left of the counter. The co-worker smiles and goes in the back room to stamp in. I meet him there to stamp out and grab my jacket. I do so and walk out to the front to grab my car keys on the counter. My co-worker stays in the back to wash up in the worker's bathroom. I know you're probably thinking that it must have been a fancy gas station. So we arrive back at the counter, but my keys aren't there. And, oh, they're on the floor. So I reach down at my feet to grab my keys, and as I'm doing so, I hear the front door open and the bell ring. I look up. It's my coworker. I say, aren't you 
in the back? My coworker grabs his jacket and sighs and then looks at me. What? He says. Just then, the coworker from the back comes to the front and I look at him. He says, Dude, you okay? Who are you talking to? I look back at the door. There's no one there. I hated that place. It was haunted or something. It had to be. So during the fall of 2021, me and my friends were out in rural Pennsylvania just shooting some guns and doing some inner wood stuff. It's getting right around dusk and everyone has already been shooting for the day. We were mostly just at the gravel pit, shooting at rocks or targets or whatever, and most of the ammo that we brought is depleted. A couple of us have some rounds to burn off, and one of us has night vision, so the three of us leave the campfire to go shoot what we have. I bring my hearing protection because I don't want tinnitus. This is important later. So we get to a sufficiently dark area, turn off our lamps, and switch on the nods, and we take turns with it. Whenever the clouds break, the stars are super bright out here, but otherwise it's very dark, even with all the gain turned up. I don't like wearing them because my buddy's helmet is too small for me. So, we get ready to shoot. I throw on my ear pro and rip off four rounds from my FAL. My buddies empty their mags into the bushes and we all giggle about the noise and the sounds like dumbasses. I still have two mags of 762 left, so I tell the guys to head back up the trail and I'll finish up. It's only about a hundred yards or so to the campfire. My dumbass friend who wasn't wearing hearing protection yells what at me since he didn't bother bringing ear pro at all and he was standing next to a battle rifle while it was firing. I repeat myself basically screaming into his ear and he gets the memo. So I put on my ear pro and go back to shooting aimlessly. I just make it to the end of my second to last mag when I hear someone screaming bloody murder. I take off my ear pro and I can still hear it off in the woods. It says, stop, stop, I need help. And it sounds like one of my friends. And I think, oh shit, I must have hit them somehow. What the hell? So I'm somewhat stunned. I managed to blurt out, you all right? While choking on my own words. I hear a distant response, probably 50 yards into the brush. Yeah, just get over here and help me. I whip out my TQ and start crashing into the bush. When I remember that both of my friends weren't wearing ear pro and that I had to practically scream at them so they could understand me. Every hair in my body stands on end. Instead of moving any closer, I tear out the old mag of my FAL and slam in my fresh mag. I end up ripping the charging handle and I never did find that mag I dropped. Those are like 50 bucks a piece. I blast five rounds into the general direction of the voice like a moron and just hightail it out of the area. I sprint back to camp where all the guys are pointing their guns at me. I'm super confused and I put my hand up. Then they explain to me that something was moving out in the trees out of range. When I turned on the night vision, they saw it from behind. They thought maybe it was a big bear or something. I tell them what I just experienced and we all, tactically, poop our pants as a collective. None of us slept a wink that night. Instead, we just stayed up around the fire and told dumb stories while being sleep deprived and on edge. There's a chance that it was just me and my friends freaking out over nothing, but man, if that didn't scare the living daylights out of me. In all honesty, it could have been something as simple as a bear, but I still can't explain hearing my friend's voice way in the woods. It's just really bizarre. So I have a story that happened to me and my friends, but you might think it's kind of lame. So I live in central Oregon, 
and my friends invited me to go help them set up some campsite in the woods. He has huge property that extends a few miles up over a hill and into a small valley type thing. And I think, sure, why not? It's a long three-day weekend. I show up with a crap ton of gear. I'm way over prepared for what we're doing. So I leave half my stuff at my friend's house. We climb up the fairly steep hill type thing and then we hike 10 miles to the campsite. The weekend before, two of my friends had come here to set up a few things like tarps and stuff. We drop off our stuff and then we get to work chopping down trees like good human beings. There's four of us in total. Everybody's pretty swole except for me, so they put me on firewood duty. I have to go r run around finding stuff for fire and also weaving the needles and stuff into our shelter. So fast forward to I had been working at this for about an hour. I wander off about half a mile away in search of some decent stuff to burn. I hear the snap of a tree branch cracking behind me. I whip around to see a cow skull up in the tree. And I think, oh, that's kind of creepy. But there's no sign of a branch snapping. This area is also relatively open for the rest of the woods, so nobody should be sneaking up on me here. So I continue on, and I find this little wooden shack on the property that's easily over a hundred years old. It's really leaning to one side and has huge gaps in the wood. There's nothing inside of it, but it's still pretty neat to see something out there that just lasts that long. I take a picture of the shack and the skull to show my friends. I bring back a pile of firewood, and then I start chopping my huge pile down with an axe. It took a little longer than I wanted it to, but after I was done, I stood back and took a long proud look at the shelter. It's looking pretty good now. Four sides, a fire pit in the middle, room for about six people, eight at most. It's insulated and easily 10 to 20 degrees warmer, and no wind, no rain. After six hours, we're finally done building this thing. We've got a fire going, and we start making our delicious sandwiches full of meat and cheese. We talk about school stuff, we play screw, marry, kill, we play cards, just typical guy stuff. The night goes on like this. We have dinner, finally delicious beef, potatoes, and carrots. We're not eating very healthy today, but whatever. It's the weekend. So we continue playing our games. I'm not very good at the game, though, because I don't want to even fictionally kill the biggest bitches in my school. It's made more awkward by the fact that at the time I had a girlfriend. We play some more cards. I win a few times and lose a few times. You know, just how up the night goes. It's been dark outside for about two hours now, and it's in like the late winter. Even with the roaring fire, I'm getting sort of cold. We're all rather sleepy now, even though it's like 7 p.m. This is weird. We shouldn't be this sleepy. And I think, were we drugged or something? What's going on? But... I fall asleep in my bag, along with the other three. At some point in the night, I wake up to the sound of a coyote and a dead fire. I throw some stuff on it and try to perform fire CPR. Eventually, it flares up again and raises the temperature by about a million degrees on the inside of the shelter. I'm still wondering why we were so sleepy. Maybe it was just the work we put into it, I don't know. Everyone else is still asleep at this point. So, I reach over to grab my phone, because I want to see what one of my friends texted me earlier. My phone is dead. I'm pretty sure I went to sleep with two bars and had it turned off. And I think, oh well, unreliable smartphones from 2015. I realize that I have a sudden urge to pee. And it's like the worst it's ever been in my life. 
I'm kind of scared to go out in the woods thanks to all those stories I read. I'm thinking that there's probably 20 goat men, skinwalker, zombie, werewolf witches already out there just waiting to, you know, eat me or something. But I grab my flashlight, which is super powered and can light up like half the woods. And I think, okay, I'm gonna do this. So. I get up and I walk outside and I shine the flashlight and I see three pairs of red eyes just beyond the range of my flashlight and I think, shit. I run back into the shelter. I trip and fall on my friend's face and he wakes up yelling. He wakes up the other two as well. He's pissed at me, but I still have to pee. And I say, man, I'm sorry, I just saw some red eyes and it scared me. It was probably a deer or something. So I apologize profusely, and he forgives me after a bit. The other two, though, are still kind of half awake, but all three go back to bed. I'm still left having to pee. So, once again, I try. I run outside, but by now I've probably risked some pretty bad bladder damage, I have my flashlight in one hand, and I start unzipping my pants with the other. I'm spinning around in circles like a paranoid idiot, and I spray myself everywhere. So I'm looking around at every detail as I swing the light around, looking for any sign of anything. And then I think to myself, wow, I really am kind of a scaredy cat, aren't I? It's been like a minute and a half now. When, when am I going to stop peeing? Finally, I've done my business, and once again, I hear a branch snap behind me. I run back to the shelter without even zipping my pants up. I'm running, so my arms are kind of flailing, and there's light swinging all around. I dive into the fort to hide from whatever it is. I don't feel very safe with that huge opening in the front and all. It doesn't help that we name the fort the Alamo, or Fort I, alternatively. So, I'm huddled up shivering in fear in my sleeping bag, and I have a metal baseball bat and a knife at my side. I sit there like that for about ten minutes, and eventually, I calm down. I don't feel like sleeping. My phone is dead, so I grab my friend's phone, and I guess his password on the second try. He has some insane data plan, so I pop in some earbuds and start listening to music. Probably not that insane in retrospect, but I was just poor and couldn't afford a good cell phone plan, or a good phone. So I'm watching videos, when I hear a drum beat. I pull up my earbuds, and I hear it again, about a minute later. And I have nightmares about this every once in a while. And I think, okay... My friends had to hear that one. Sure enough, one of them is half awake now. My friend shakes the other two awake, and I tell them to be quiet. We sit there, just listening. A minute or two later, we hear the drum beat, and I say under a whisper, this is not effing good. My life expectancy is dropping by the second, we all grab our knives and stuff to defend ourselves. We contemplate putting out the fire, but by this point they probably already know where we are, and maybe we can burn them or something, I don't know. My friend is trying to find his phone so he can call the police to come retrieve our bodies. We're hiding in the corners of the shelter, in defensive positions, ready to stab whoever or whatever the hell comes in here. The drum beats start accelerating. We're counting now. Each time, it's 15 seconds faster. And it's closer each time. I see a light through the opening. A torch. It's over the ridge. It stops getting closer, but it gets more frequent. We debate on getting up and just trying to run the 10 miles or whatever it was to his home. Just as the drum is beating every other second, it stops. There's movement on the ridge. A figure walks up backlit by the torchlight. 
It stands there for the longest time and bends down and seems to put a box on the ground, turns around and walks away and puts out the torch. We all think, what the F just happened? The drumbeat picks up again, but at a very slow pace and getting farther and farther away. Originally, we were planning on staying another night, but because of these recent events, we decided against it. We packed everything up and just set up waiting until the sun was barely rising. One of our friends reminds us of the box. We're really scared, but far, far too curious. We walk over to the box the man dropped. As we approach it, there's a nasty smell. We climb up over the ridge and we see it. There's some sort of decomposing animal head. It looks like a coyote. Attached to the stake is a sign. It says something along the lines of, This is our land. Do not pass within the boundaries we have set down. Do not enter the valley. You may set up camp anywhere you wish on these lands, but not in this small valley. Never return. Do not call the police. And we think, well, that's pretty spooky. So we start fast walking back home. The sun's starting to rise a bit more. The whole way, we feel like we have a dozen eyes on us, but we can't make out anything in the thick fog of the morning. Finally, after what seemed like forever in a day, we made it back home. We slide down a smooth part of the hill into my friend's backyard and run inside and lock the door. We sit on the couches in the living room and we say nothing for about 10 minutes. I break the silence and talk about how good the food was and we have some leftovers. We start eating and just try to shift away from what has happened. We've only talked about it maybe once since. And that's why none of us have gone camping for over a year now. One of our favorite activities back then. And I'm hoping that it was just someone screwing with us and not some kind of weird, screwed up, supernatural cult in the woods. Either way, it was spooky. So, what'd you think of those stories? Which one was your favorite one? Let me know down in the comments. Do you have a story of your own? I have an email in the description that you can send them to if you want to. I also have links there to a Patreon and a PayPal if you want to donate to the channel. You can also donate with the Super Thanks button. And, with all that, I think that I will see you in the next one. Halloween's coming soon, isn't it? I should do something for that. Anyways, I'll work on that, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for pulling up a stump, and thank you for watching.